I'd like to welcome you to Navigating Families and Business in a Time of Crisis. This is one of our topics that we've selected as part of our COVID-19 series. If you've joined us before, then you're familiar that over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing live and recorded broadcasts every day at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Those are all archived and available for you to look back at. And today we're going to be talking with Nathan Taylor, who's part of the UNI Applied Human Science Program right here at the University of Northern Iowa. I wanna remind anybody who's joining us that as we go through this, if you have questions you wanna ask, you are able to go down to the Q&A and type those in. We'll be taking those throughout our time here. And so feel free to, to join us or to put something in that you would like us to address. So I'd like to hand it over to Nathan and have him tell us a little bit about who he is and what he does here at the University of Northern Iowa. All right, Jane, um, thank you. It's a great opportunity to be here and to share some of my knowledge and expertise in regards to family. Uh, hopefully it will be beneficial to all of you that are listening. So a little bit about me. Um, I am a faculty in the School of Applied Human Sciences. Specifically, I'm in the Family Service Program. And so my, some of my background is I'm a trained marriage and family therapist, so I do have a clinical perspective. And I enjoy working with families. I enjoy working with couples. Um, and both my clinical and my research is on improving the health and well-being of individuals and families. And so a lot of my uh, research and areas of interest uh, fit well with Iowa in addressing rural mental health and trying to develop innovative ways to um, improve access and acceptability to resources around mental, uh, mental health. So this is a great example of the things that I like to do, trying to take resources from um, take resources into the homes, into the lives of those that, that most need it. And so this is a great opportunity and great uh, initiative um, that, you've, um, that you've undertaken as a way to, uh, to help those struggling during this challenging time. Well, we really appreciate your time today. And we know with our audience, we've had a real mix. A lot of um, who Advance Iowa reaches are businesses. And in this mm -hmm. uncertain time, we've got a lot of layers that are starting to happen. So uh, let's start with some questions. Um, what I'd like to talk or have you address is, tell us how this crisis is changing families right now. Yeah, so just like if you are stressed in your home life, um, it is going to go and influence your family or your business and all of your uh, business relationships and business dealings. The same thing is happening as we are experiencing this COVID crisis and as uh, business owners, business employees, the entire country are struggling with this, is we are bringing these stresses into our home. And it, it influences families that dip very differently. And a lot of it depends on the developmental stage of the family, where are they at? And so we, what we are seeing, you know, the dating stage, we'll consider that family and people trying to find um, people to date or to go out on dates and what that looks like, you can't really, or you're not supposed to and bars are closed and or me meeting people or going out on dates and romantic dinners and so those in the dating stage are having to find innovative ways to to date um, those at the newly married or at the married stage stages I had a cousin just this last week uh, was married and she um, the only, the only person at her wedding was, you know, her parents and her siblings. And so it is influencing how, how marriages and those newly married couples are navigating these times. Um, those with children are, you know, the schools are closed. And so now the uh, young children, the children are at home uh, trying to balance this uh, need to educate them and the homeschool and which is creating lots of challenges for parents and the children and balance, balance of the stress associated with that. Uh, if you have older children who are more, more likely, uh, who previous to the crisis were developing higher levels of independence. Um, and so they were able to have jobs and spend time with friends and now they are confined to homes. And 
if we extend to em empty nesters or those where the children are starting to leave college, some of those families, college students are returning home to live with them. And so that is creating new, new dynamics, new challenges associated with, with that. And then others are in this stage, which is called the sandwich generation, uh, where they are now taking care of their younger children or taking care of their children who are moving home, providing financial resources, emotional resources for that. And then they are also caring for their aging parents. And so there's a lot of stress for that generation um, or that stage of family as they are, um, again, just kind of stuck in between both generations and trying to support it, trying to figure out ways. Um, then we have the retired generation who uh, are, you know, perhaps they were getting ready to retire and this is influencing their, influencing their decisions, uh, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Decisions to retire are not personal decisions, but forced retirement. And so you're having challenges associated with that. And then the elderly, we're seeing lots of challenges related to them as far as um, family members in nursing homes and not being able to visit them. Or perhaps they don't have family members living with them. And then so they are isolated in additional ways, um, not having that interaction with other people. And so depending on that developmental stage of the family is you're having these, this crisis influence them in a variety of different ways. And none is more challenging or less challenging than the other. They're all just different. And so if we can understand that, each is have, experiencing unique challenges um, and we need to understand that and find ways to overcome them. And Nathan, can you talk a little bit about what has been some of the responses uh, of yeah. these families? Yeah, so um, the, the challenge with families is, or not the challenge, so how families function is we develop our normal way of functioning. Um, the researchers call it their homeostasis. So it's, it's just our normal way. This is our routine. This is how our family uh, functions. These are the rules within our family, and these are the roles of each member of the family. And like a business, is that if everyone does their part, we're all functioning how we should be. Well, the challenge with this crisis is it has changed all of that. And so where someone may be gone from home and gone uh, out to work or the children are out to school, now everyone is home and the rules and roles within the family um, are different. And the, the challenge when a crisis like this happens is our response to that reorganization of the family. And so depending on that response and that time to reorganize really depends on how we bounce back from this crisis. Um, the, uh, so yeah, the families are kind of stuck in that we've experienced this crisis, we're reorganizing, um, and we're trying to adapt to best, to best meet individual family needs. And so if you have a family that, as they're going through this, are finding that maybe some of the more challenging factors are escalating. Are there mm -hmm. things that you would suggest? Because we have another 30 days of this potentially. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't remind us. <laughs> got to enter, in my inter, uh, introduction, I have um, this experience of the challenge related to young children. I have three young children. I have a nine-year-old son, Boston, six-year-old son, Cooper, and a three-year-old daughter, Addie, and a beautiful wife, Courtney. And so some of these challenges uh, really resonate. And so when I hear 30 days uh, that, mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, we, uh, we have more of this. So um, as far as responding to crisis and preventing it from escalating, the one way to think of it is, uh, so to, to help prevent a stressor from re uh, resulting in a crisis depends on kind of two things. Um, one is it depends on our resources. And so, Resources include individual resources, such as our adaptability, such as our um, resilience, our intelligence, all of those things. Uh, then we have family resources, right? Family support, um, financial resources within the family, and then we have community resources. And so our community organizations, our uh, businesses within communities, and all of those um, represent resources. And those who have more resources or pay attention to the, and build those resources during times of crisis or during times of stress helps it not result in this crisis, not escalate it, it slows it down. So during this time, we need to be paying attention to those resources, what resources are available, 
how can I access them? Because um, I, I likely can't access them like I have previously. The other part that helps prevent something like this from becoming a crisis or escalating is our perception of the problem. And so how, how we define it. Is it this, um, this stress outside of my ability to control, which it is, but there are a lot of things that I can control. And so this idea of mastery, there are things that I can master, things that I can do to help um, make this situation better. And so that perception of the problem includes things like optimism, hope. Um, a lot of people during these times, spirituality is a, a, gives them a perception of how to view this problem. And as we look for those um, and as we uh, strengthen those, it helps escalate it into additional times. Uh, um, one thing I want to mention about in regards to resources is during this time, a lot of families, uh, especially with children, so I'm speaking a little for myself here, is we focus on you know, the children or we're focusing on our elderly parents and we forget to focus on that resource of the couple relationship, the parent relationship. And so finding times to strengthen that um, during these times can really help um, buffer some of the uh, stress involving the other aspects. Awesome. Well, I know one of the pieces that you just mentioned that I know I've heard come up before is this idea of hope and anxiety. So when you have someone that's struggling, and how do you find hope and how do you deal with the anxiety that kind of gets tied to it? Yeah, and, and this, this thing's, the anxiety of this time is really high. And a lot of it is because of this, we don't, this unknown. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know really the long-term implications. And so uh, that's versus we have this anxiety. Let's not pretend it doesn't exist. Um, and, but, it, but it is there. Uh, one thing that I, one example that I like to illustrate as far as um, how to manage our own challenges during this time is um, I give the example is if, if your best friend during this time called you up and said, ah, Jane, I'm really struggling right now. Uh, this COVID-19, I'm not sure about my business or um, my job, you know, I may get laid off, all these anxieties. Um, most people, if their friend did that, they would respond with things like, oh, Jane, you got this, or Jane, this is, this is really hard, and um, I understand, and you can do this. And we, we respond with the, that hope and optimism that we want. Mm -hmm. uh, or that we need, or that we hope that they need, and I and we really believe it, um, and so we know how to do it. But when we turn it to ourselves, and I'm so, if if I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, I'm really struggling, and then I, what's I'm not saying my response to that is not, oh, you can do this. You're right. This is really hard, um, but I know you can do it. Uh, I believe in you. We're responding like, oh, I shouldn't feel like this. Um, I shouldn't be thinking like this. And so uh, just taking the skills we would, uh, we would normally apply to those we care about and apply them to ourselves. And then really that's this idea of self-compassion and finding ways for ourselves to be okay with, um, with this time. The other thing to find is in terms of um, finding hope is looking for the good, uh, being careful with how much time we spend I, I was watching one news network and there was a tracker of how many people had COVID, how many people had co uh, died from co COVID-19. And, you know, as I'm watching the, it tick up, my anxiety was increasing. So just limit the amount spent on, on some of those aspects, skewing some of that negative material. I'm not saying don't inform yourself, but that can consume us and really add to our anxiety in ways that we don't need it. Yeah, I think you hit something there. I think, you know, partly because we're all home, it's very easy to fall into that because everything around us is focused on COVID-19. And so one of the pieces that you and I had a conversation yesterday, and so it was, it was thinking through how do you identify the silver lining and define purpose during this time? Yeah, um, I, you're first you're right it is consuming all things uh, my little kids even when we had lightning in the house house shook and my oldest was like what was that and then my middle one said oh oh hold on my light turned off sorry 
<laughs> that happens. <laughs> You're in a room that if it doesn't uh, recognize movement. Yeah, sorry about that. And the sensor's kind of uh, uh, behind the bookcase, so it doesn't see, it doesn't <laughs> recognize my presence. Um, and I, I was telling the story of there was lightning and um, my oldest was like, what was that? And my, young, my middle one said, oh, I, it's COVID-19. And it is just consuming and um, everything that we do. So how do we find the silver um, lining? How do we redefine our purpose? I, as, as I was kind of mentioning the, um, we need to limit the amount of time we spend. We spend viewing all these negative. And it, as a re alternatively, look for things that are good. Uh, John Krasinski, who's Jim on The Office, he had um, put out a few days ago the Some Good Network. And as I was watching that, it changed the way I felt, um, the way I was seeing things. It was the silver lining. It was, I was looking, seeing people do wonderful, amazing things during this time of crisis, and uh, he was just highlighting those. Mm -hmm. so as we look for opportunities to see those in those around us, um, for example, one of our neighbors dropped off a thing of cookies and just rang the doorbell and ran, and there was a little note on it, hey, as soon as this is over, we'll have a great cookout. Um, so looking for those people that are doing that and then alternatively do those things. Um, look for ways to, um, to improve the life of those around us. And as we do it, we develop this greater sense of purpose and we, we rekindle this connection that we have with those that we care about. And I think that's really, really key. Um, if, if this has done anything, it's helped us realize the importance of human connection. Mm -hmm. uh, of connecting with those that we care about and we have to change we have to change the way we we're doing that so rather than having a barbecue perhaps i'm going to um my wife and her friends did this they did a zoom which is just uh that's what we're doing so everyone knows Zoom. it's a, it's a they did a zoom game night and so everyone brought their own dice and they um they played uh games over Zoom. And I, do you want to share what your, your family's doing? I would. So we had talked about this and I have five siblings that range in age from 50 to 65. They have kids of their own. And so we started doing on Fridays, we call it 505 Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so right now we cross over four states and ages uh, range from, gosh, we have a three month old all the way up to a 65 year old. And so every week we get on and it looks like the Brady Bunch in terms of the number of boxes. And it's allowed me to reconnect with nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews that we just don't take the time or unless somebody comes home or travels back this way. And so now we started too where we have a theme. So this Friday night, it's wear your crazy hat. And we have a conversation, it's a conversation starter. So everybody has to kind of reflect back to a time that could be somewhat similar to this in that it changed something about your daily life. And I know I have some nieces and nephews that are homeschooling and trying to interlay this. Mm -hmm. And so they're having their kids do a little research and you know find a time frame that they can make some comparisons to, and then they'll get to hear the kind of the live versions from my mom, who's in her 80s, um, all the way down to, you know, some of us that are a little younger, not much, but it has kind of redefined, um, or the, I guess the silver lining is the big piece there. It's found a new opportunity. Yeah, and, and we wouldn't have done, we were just so consumed with our busy lives and it was busy. Uh, oftentimes we didn't take these opportunities previously. And now, you know, I have family in every different time zone in the United States and before it was like, oh, I wonder if so-and-so's home from work. I'd like to call them home, but they're probably working. Mm -hmm. Many, many people are home. And I, I do want to make an additional comment is oftentimes we text people, um, which is a great way to communicate. However, there are certain physiological benefits that come when we hear someone we care about's voice, when we see their face. And so during these times, don't just be texting Opportun use opportunities to video conference, FaceTime, um, all, all of these different things. One thing I want to uh, make a note about uh, in regards to purpose is uh, 
the author Victor Frankel and Man's Search for Meaning. He um, was a uh, uh, he was from Austria and he was in a concentration camp during World War II. And what he identified of those that survived and those that didn't really centered around those who have purpose, um, they, they survived and they flourished. And so this idea of purpose during this time, how can we redefine this purpose? I love the book by Cheryl um, Sandberg, who is the CEO, COO of Facebook. It's called Option B. And what she says is her husband died and so, um, Option A for her was having her husband alive and um, them raising their family and all of those things. And someone told her, well, option A isn't available anymore. So mm -hmm. how can you make the best of option B? And so during this time, how can we make the be best of this, this option? How can we use those, these opportunities we have to connect in new ways that weren't there previously? I think that is great advice. I think that is, as I listen to people and as I try to think for myself uh, how to do that, there's just some great words of wisdom. And I think one of the pieces that I'm learning from people around me, I've been fortunate because I can remote work from home. So mm -hmm. I, I have a daily sense of purpose in terms of what I'm trying to achieve through that. But I've also tried to start a list of things that I never take the time to do. Mm -hmm. So I enrolled in an online class doing that right now. I started painting our house um, inside, but decided that I didn't want to get too overwhelmed with it. So I only do a wall a day. And Perfect. So it's kind of those types of things of looking from words of wisdom and advice from professionals and deciding that um, instead of looking at this as being isolated and stuck, uh, trying to redefine the paradigm and shift it to opportunities of things that I just was it taking the time to do? So do you have any other words of wisdom or advice? We're getting close to finishing up. So um, just yeah. want to be able to kind of wrap that together. Also resources, if there's some, some different ideas of ways that you think people could reach out and connect. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first is just kind of, kind of last suggestions. In, in the research on families during the Great Depression, uh, they identified two aspects of families that were key to those that successfully navigated those challenges. And the first was this idea of integration, which is really how close and connected you are to those around you. And so I think that's what we've talked about a, a lot. So one way to better enhance those connections, um, I love all of John Gottman's work. And so I mentioned earlier the importance of strengthening those couple relationships, those parenting relationships. He has a book, Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work that has a lot of just resources, um, activities that during this downtime you can spend with those that you care about to help strengthen those relationships. And the second aspect of, from that research on from the uh, Great Depression was this idea of adaptation. So how, will, how adaptive were you willing to be? And I think that, um, that fits into that option B that I was just uh, illustrating as far as we have to adapt our expectations um, our expectations for ourselves and our ex expectations for others. And one way we do that is just this acceptance of the unknown. Uh, we don't know, as I mentioned earlier, this, we don't know how long this is going to last, how long it's going to happen, um, the, the, the complete implications. And so just kind of that acceptance, we don't know, and we're going to navigate that when we get there. Um, one other kind of suggestion I have is use this time to create new family traditions. Uh, like your Zoom meetings on Friday. And as we make these new family traditions, we'll look back on this, this experience of COVID-19 as a time when we were able to strengthen our family relationships, our relationships with those that are um, impor important to us in new ways. And so using software like this Zoom, um, it, they have a free, so uh, free version where you can do videos up to 45 minutes and um, bring several different people on and be able to uh, adapt the way we interact in new ways. That's awesome. And Nathan, if you um, have someone that is around you that maybe you know needs more help than what they're, they're finding through their own resources, do you have some ideas of what that could look like? Ab absolutely. So um, that, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you brought that up because during this time, it, it's especially important for all of us to look out 
uh, for those around us, to look for those that you know are struggling, need professional help, those that may uh, may be having suicidal ideation, and so uh, uh, for therapists, clinicians, they many of them have gone to doing telehealth, which is doing it just like this, and so. Um, reaching out to local therapists. Psychology Today is a great way to do that. If it's family-related uh, problems, the Association of Marriage and Family Therapy has uh, a list of providers who are trained in working with families and um, those sorts of things. And in regards to suicidal ideation, um, sometimes we're afraid to talk about it. We're afraid to ask about it. Um, but the research is clear. It doesn't increase the likelihood of people attempting to die by suicide if we ask them. And so don't be afraid to ask, are you having any thoughts of harming yourself? Um, uh, you know, I've been worried about you. I just want to check in. How are, th how are things doing? And then uh, having conversations around it. And that's everyone's responsibilities. I uh, have collaborated with some people in Australia, and when they had a severe drought about a decade ago, they trained insurance agents to go and assess for suicidal ideation. So when they were visiting these people who are in crisis, they were asking, um, and it was very effective. So we need to be looking out for other people and then um, referring them to resources, supporting them, encouraging them. Uh, like I said, psychology today is a great way. Talk to your primary care provider. They often have resources of people that they refer to in your local area. Great, I appreciate that. And thank you so much for taking time today. I think this is a really important topic and the great thing with this series is that we have covered the variety of things. <laughs> yeah. and so anybody that would like to look back and see what topics are available, they can go to Advance Iowa. And Advance Iowa is our program that does outreach across the state. And we also have a program called the Family Business Center. And that's focused on family businesses who at this time of need also uh, has their own challenges, but a lot of what we talked about definitely applies whether you're in a business setting or mm -hmm. in your own personal home, just dealing with uh, family members. And so I think out of today, there definitely are some important tools and we look forward to continuing to provide resources. So I would suggest anybody that would like to learn more, whether it be about this topic or other topics, they're uh, welcome to visit our website and we'll continue to update. Um, all of these are available on replay as well as uh, we'll continue to add to the library. So um, I would encourage people to check back next week and um, we'll continue to see where this landscape uh, goes in terms of navigation. And I know there was a topic that was earlier in the week and it was um, the CEO from Fairway and so he talked a little bit about the new normal. And I think that'll be kind of our next thing as we get beyond this crisis, that there'll be some things that happen that become our new normal. And in many cases, we will just transition to that. But in other cases, I'm sure we'll have to struggle to accept that and um, find the new normal that works for all of us. So. Absolutely, that, that adaptation, um... Uh, principle of those who are willing to adapt and develop that new normal. Uh, at some of the other uh, webinars from earlier, there was one on grief, which was great. We're all, we're all experiencing this great loss and one on self-care as well. Um, I just want to add what, uh, one additional thing is the, one of the strengths of business professionals is this idea of setting goals and achieving goals. And um, in regards to this, you know, families being able to strengthen that during the uh, strength and family relationships during this, this time is to set goals around families, right? So this week I'm going to connect with five family members. I'm gonna spend this 15 minutes with each of my children doing things they wanna do each day. Um, so using your skills and strengths as business professionals to um, strengthen your families during this time by setting and achieving goals. That's a great, great advice and a great way to, to finish out our time here. So again, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Thanks.